can't believe it. This aircraft is full of danger. I've been waiting for you. Waiting anxiously. The more I wait, the more scared I get. Let's take care of this. This is the final phase. Dr. Johnson said this on January 26th, 2011. Huh? January 26th, 2011? That's the day she died. It says that it was very cold that day with a record snowfall. Anything else? Oh, there's plenty more. My breakfast that morning, the time I left for work, color of my socks, the amount of gauzes I used that day, and an emergency case that night. Show me that page. No, it's mine. I'll do whatever you need for the final phase. Anything. So please, show it to me. Mm, if it means so much to you. Okay. However, the final investigation isn't going to be easy. It's like Dr. Johnson always says, get older and you'll need the toilet more often. That means you need to check the toilets on board as quickly as possible. Go and check that all the toilets can be used within the time limit. Oh, just make sure you keep your promise. Go get to work. Ready, set, this is really the last time. Go, go, go! Toilets are all fine. They are? That's good. Now I can grow old in peace. Please, show me the notebook. Mm, just this once. These are my notes, after all, not yours. Did you find anything interesting? It's got a whole day in here, which gives it a perfect alibi. Even if these notes are fake, Dr. Johnson will likely vouch for her. She's in the clear. If I find anything else I need you for, I hope you'll help me out. We'll see. Just don't expect too much from me. You also take notes on suspicious people, right? That's right. 
There's you, of course, and I've got notes on that guy with the mannequin. Oh, I've got his number. He's one of them object sexuals. I'll have to take your word for that. It's a term applied to individuals who fall in love with inanimate objects. Come on, you've heard of it. A type of paraphilia. It's like Dr. Johnson always says, love has no boundaries. What about the guy with the scar on his forehead? Stony face? In business class? Oh yes. Workaholic. Textbook. He's got it bad, too. He's either using his work to run away from something, or work itself is his reason for living. Reason for living? It's like Dr. Johnson always says. It doesn't matter what it is. Just find a reason to live. What's the most dangerous thing on an airplane? Oh, there's lots of dangerous stuff. Maybe the number of times a baby has cried. Or times lavatories are full. Or maybe it's the number of times someone has blown their nose. Although, of course, you have to count the separate directions. But most dangerous, though. I mean, the epitome of danger. Ooh. Ooh. Was when the flight attendant screwed up the in-flight announcement and called Massachusetts Matatutetu. Matatutetu what? Yes. Can you believe that? Normally you would at least apologize, correct yourself. But no, nothing. That'll make people think that Massachusetts is actually meant to be pronounced don't you see how dangerous that is? It's like Dr. Johnson always says, always admit your mistakes. Do you fly often? No, this is my first time. To celebrate the fifth anniversary of my starting work, Dr. Johnson gave me some holiday and a ticket. Go spread your wings, literally. That's what he said to me. But you know, these airplanes shake around more than I imagined. And the air is so dry. When taking off, I thought my stomach was making a break for it. How am I meant to spread my wings under all this pressure? How many notebooks have you filled? Oh, not many yet on this trip. Let me see. Two in the taxi from my house, and then three and a half in the airport. Since I got on board, only about one and an eighth of another. So... six? Yes, well, six and a third, or so. What's it to you, anyway? Why do you want to know? Huh. That's a very good question. Cherry blossoms and snow a switch. No mistake. So what does that mean?
won't open. Of course it won't. There's more than five tons of pressure per square meter on that door. <laughs> what was I thinking? What a beautiful sunset. It reminds me of the day I proposed. <laughs> Little Peggy. I'll find who killed you. I will. Door looks fine. Turn asshole. Hey, God damn it, Marshall. <laughs> I'll be slapped with a match penalty if I push my luck any further. I'd better look for another way before I'm sent off for good. <laughs> There's nothing here.
Tequila is made from the agave plant. They take eight to ten years from planting to be ready to harvest. During that time, they have to be carefully pruned and tended to. <sighs> Every time I drink this liquor, it feels like I'm pouring liquid time down my throat. A very strange sensation. Where'd the courier go to?
This is a problem. Where is it? Are you looking for something? Not at all, Mr. Young. I am completely at your disposal. Have you contacted the airport? Yes, 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 of course. Are you telling me the truth? It looks like you're so busy searching that you haven't done anything yet. I'll find what you're looking for. You just contact the ground. <clears throat> That's very kind of you. Very well. I have lost a glove. A glove? And it has to be this specific one? Yes. It's a special order, perfectly fitted to my hand. I'm in serious trouble without it. Why is he getting so upset about a glove? She pointed a gun at me. Are you saying I was seeing things? I think you must have. Maybe it was a pepper shaker. Even if she was on board this flight, there is absolutely no way she would be able to get a gun on board as well. It was a Glock 26. I'm very sorry, sir. Perhaps the shock of the lightning has caused you to be... confused. Whatever the case, I have to talk to her again. Then you'll just need to keep on flying with us. If you get lucky, you'll end up on a flight with her. Eventually. That's not really what I meant. is okay? You're pulling my leg. If the windows were really squeaking, why, we'd all be dead by now. That lightning strike would have come in through the cracked window. We'd have smashed into the sea, its surface harder than concrete. It's like Dr. Johnson always says. Fall from an airplane and you'll die. So just keep your fear-mongering to yourself. There certainly doesn't seem to be any counting in her notes. What's going on here, then? Looks fine. It's still been used. But we're flying toward Boston now. How come it's been used?
You don't have a name yet, so that's what I'll call you. Take everything you need from my body, and then you'll be born strong and tough, just like your father. You don't have to worry about copying his hair, though, especially if you're a girl. <laughs>
Are you eating okay? Strange that you'd suggest that. <laughs> Must be a weird day. Enough beating around the bush. Come on, just say you want to eat. That's what I'm saying. Okay, go wash up. We found a floater in the Mystic River. Ah. Perfect conversation for the dinner table. Perfectly perfect. Um, uh, two detectives at the table, one private. Sounds like the start of a bad joke. Hmm. An old couple living along Shore Drive found the body. They were out power walking and got a nasty surprise. Teddy, please. The joke goes on? Humor me, you sourpuss. So let's call the corpse in the river Adam, our Vic. And we'll call our suspect Billy. He just turned himself in today. Hmm. Our suspect Billy also has a younger sister who was killed recently. Pretty morbid for a quiz show. She's our second Vic. Okay. Carol. The investigation revealed that, apparently, Billy learned Adam had killed Carol. And so killed him in revenge. Then tossed his body in the river. But something just doesn't quite add up. Carol's body was fished out of the river too? Yep, that's right. Suspect Billy says he wanted to give him the same treatment as he gave his sis. <laughs> Maybe Billy killed them both. Although that doesn't add up either, does it? There's no reason he would confess to just killing Adam in that case. That's where I got stumped too. Adam and Carol were probably lovers. Billy, responsible for his sister, was against the relationship. So he tossed them both in the Mystic River. Were they wearing matching rings? Any jewelry? Indeed they were, David. They had rings on that the witnesses saw them buying from a street stall. <sighs> Love blinds people to those around them. It was the same with me and little Peggy. So why'd Billy lie, huh? It's no great chase. He wanted to get between them, even if the only way was as victim and killer. Loneliness can really work a man over. I'll let the boys in Homicide know tomorrow. And I'll put this one on your tab, Teddy.
Amanda. She seems to like it.